momentum carrying it through. So having driven it around this little off-road course in the new Defender and the 15 plate Defender, we're just going to do it in the old Camel now, 30 year old Camel. Uh, it's pretty low range, diff locks locked up, no traction control whatsoever, so it's going to be interesting to see what it can do or what it, when it gets stuck on these uh, wheel lifting humps, we shall see the first gear. Momentum carrying it through. Right. People call the Defender a Disco 5 because they say that's what the Disco 5 should have been. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you agree with that? Um, I, I guess it's probably the best thing they could ever say. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. That's good, guys. That's the whole package, really. The CV tech has come a long, long way. So if you are a younger lad and you haven't got much cash, an old Disco 1, especially about 10 years ago, was the way to go. You could pick these up for 400 quid and they'd have MOT on them, they'd be ready to go with 200 TDI in them. I'm on my way to Plymouth. Happy birthday, Disco. Come on. Even if he's the hardest, most hardest, diehard, traditional Land Rover shape type person, this is a win, just a win. Right, the seats might go forward, but we've got, I think it's capable, it's doable. Anyway, why am I including the Range Rover Sport in a Range Rover feature? It seems extremely formidable, and I think that people sporting or shouting G-Wagon and Wrangler I think G-Wang and Wrangler have a big wake-up call and I think this is this is the future. Uh, enhanced hill hold which is better, it just holds you on a hill, like what it's did there for you, uh, which is great for sort of off-road use and stuff. Well I think that's the idea behind it is that with these cars this is what you can do with them. Yeah. You know we don't have to change anything on that one. A bit more, yeah, that's it and then keep it there, perfect. <laughs> it just occurred to me, I've got a chase car with us. Sorry about the sound by the way. This afternoon we'll be doing another run at full speed. I've got brain freeze from a slushy. I bought my first Series 1 in 1988 as a 14 year old lad and I didn't join uh, Land Rover until 2011. So, so you had enough time all by your lonesome not to be tainted by a corporate brush? <laughs> I explain technically what I'm in is the disco equivalent of Huey. That's what right I say. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, here's the thing about disco, and I've said this before in my other films, but I'm gonna say it again. It's it's the sweet spot, and this is the birth of the sweet spot. And I have slept in this in minus three, minus four, and been really toasty. 
And as, this vehicle was uh, built for the 1994 Motor Show. So the introduction of the you know up, upgrade to Discovery, the facelift to Discovery One, where they changed the you know the front headlights fascia. You got the 300 TDI. You had the R380 gearbox. So we want to do trial successfully. Don't clack the camera or be a really good presenter. Tim Slass is just about to come off this drop off. Right. Lovely, hold it there. Beautiful, down we go. London to Singapore, no problem. Hill and Berkshire, no problem. Lovely job. <laughs> Windscreen wipers are on. Right. What do you think of the 110? Bloody marvellous. <laughs> I'm absolutely knackered. Rich thinks, well, after 10 years, then we'll see. Now, obviously, some people can't wait 10 years, but we, we have to wait 10 years because we just don't have money. But um, <laughs> he says eating affiliate steak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this probably costs more than a new defender, but. How simple this is to drive. Look at my elbow room. What a, you know, this came out two years before the Series 3. Aha, <laughs> irony. Now we're in Switzerland. Now we're in Switzerland, yeah. It was a train in the neck to get here, but there we go, we managed it. Uh, 